again, we can be tempted to look at the night sky and say that's basically unchanging over my lifetime, but not really. Sometimes, you know, sometimes it gets really dynamic. <laughs> and uh, the another thing that and we've talked about this before that I'm waiting for is a great comet, you know, something really crazy yes you know like they used to describe yeah the, the kids these days have no idea what a great comet really looks like like we saw hail bop and hyakutake but it was like 2000 1999 like 97 i think for hail bop wasn't it seven like we're 25 years like there are people who are going to be listening to this who were not born when the last great comet was here. And it was stunning. Like you went outside and the tail was the size of your hand across the sky, you know, hold your hand out and the tail stretched all the way back and it had multiple colors. You could, you could see the main tail and then the ion tail. And then, and this was even before all this modern astrophotography techniques came out. And so every picture of a comet that's been taken in the last 20 years is fine but it's but it's with a bad subject it's going to be the good comet and then people talk about the even the bigger ones back in the 60s and stuff yeah and then of course a meteor storm is another thing like we keep getting these hints and and threats of a meteor storm like one where it's hundreds of thousands of meteors per hour and that happened like 1966 yeah again that would be stunning yeah the great meteor storm which was a particularly dense part, as I recall, of a regular meteor shower that happens every year. It's just you go through a dense part every so often. Yeah. And it just lights up. Yeah. I don't know that, that that's really hard to predict, though. <laughs> it is hard. So, so each time a comet, like all of the meteors, meteor showers come from comets, one comes from an asteroid, but they mostly come from comets. And so each time the comet moves around the solar system, it leaves a trail of particles and the Earth will pass through the trail, but it'll pass through some older version of the trail. But every now and then you get the Earth passing through a very recent version of the trail that's been laid down and that gets you the meteor storm. And you get one every hundred years or so and they just sound off the charts. And I mean, the closest I seen was the Leonids back in again, like 2000, 2001, maybe we talked about this before. But you know, I was watching a meteor every few seconds, which was great. But we know the universe can do better. Indeed, I wonder if we could create and this is this is my usual crazy talk. If we could create an artificial meteor storm. <laughs> yes. Is no, this is in the works. So there's a Japanese, co yeah, it's a Japanese company that has developed an artificial meteor shower from a from a satellite, and so they will it'll eject a meteor shower. I don't know if it's been launched yet, but the plan was to test it. And obviously, like I think people are kind of grumpy about the idea because it's more light pollution, but I, I'm okay with it because it's in a very small localized area. It's a one time event. It's not like an ongoing really bright satellite that's going to be up there all the time like you you know you're going to you're going to release the particles over Tokyo and and see the meteor storm so it's been it's been proposed and i think someone is is fairly long down the pathway of actually developing it 